Hello and welcome to evening prayer on this Thursday of the seventh week of Easter, the second day of June. And we're right in the middle between the Feast of the Ascension and Pentecost. And today our readings, uh, well, let me first say this. Today we celebrate also a couple of saints uh, in the church, uh, early church. This is only the, the second century and uh, two martyrs. Of course, in those days, in the first 300 years of the, the church, right after Jesus' uh, ascension and the, the church began its ministry, um, faced a lot of persecution and, and many martyrs. Uh, the Roman Empire was very much uh, about eradicating uh, the Christians. They, they found them to be a big threat uh, to their uh, existence. And, you know, they, they were right because here we are, uh, Roman Catholics, in the year 2022. And if you go to Rome today, there's uh, no uh, presence of the Roman Empire anymore. Uh, it met its demise centuries ago, but here we are still standing and still going strong. So the early persecutions of the church and these two martyrs, Saints Marcellinus and Saint Peter, uh, early priests in the church, and both of them were uh, beheaded uh, for not uh, denying their their faith, they were given the opportunity to to uh, recant their teachings and their beliefs, but they did not do so and paid the ultimate price for it. So Saints Marcellinus and Saint Saint Marcellinus and Saint Peter pray for us. Thank you for your contribution to salvation history and for all the the souls that you saved through your lives. Anyway, our readings today um, talk about division and uh, unity and how they're the polar opposite uh, to, you know, the division and the polarity are, or unity, I'm sorry, I'm getting all my words mixed up. Division and unity, the opposite ends of the spectrum, how uh, they are one is from God, the unity, where you know division is always always uh, a product of the devil, the great scatterer. And we see in our first reading, uh, <laughs> Paul used it to his advantage here. It seems he was being accused of preaching the gospel. And he was uh, brought before all of the officials of the the synagogue by the government officials because of all the you know the the, the charges brought against Paul. So the the uh, the local government wanted to know what's going on, what's the beef, where's the you know what what are they charging this man with? And so Paul, seeing that there were both Pharisees and Sadducees there accusing him and, you know, uh, mad at him for preaching the gospel of Jesus, uh, he, knowing the, the two groups and the difference between the two groups, simply said that he was just uh, awaiting awaiting the resurrection and talked about the resurrection of Christ and how we too will be, you know, uh, taken up in the resurrection. And that caused quite a stir because the Pharisees uh, believed in angels and, and the resurrection and the afterlife where the Sadducees, and it is sad, you see, that they did not believe in any of that. And so they uh, started uh, an argument between the two. 
to the point where the uh, the government officials had to get Paul out of there, worried for his safety. And then uh, that night, uh, Jesus appeared to Paul and said, well done. <laughs> and he said, as you have testified here, now take heart, you have to also testify in Rome. And then he went off to Rome, where of course we know that was uh, his last his last stop in his in his ministry uh, because he was finally uh, imprisoned there and beheaded uh, by the Romans so we have uh, that story today about division and then the gospel today Jesus again as we head towards Pentecost in the end of Easter season talking about unity about wanting us to all be one, to set aside, set aside our our petty, insignificant differences, and unify, unify under the love of Christ, unify with each other and with Christ, just as Jesus says. I'm unified with the Father. The Father and I are one. And because of that, if you are faithful to me, you will also be one like I am one with my Father. So Jesus calling us to be one and not be scattered, not be divided. Boy, in today's life, in our civilization, in our culture, do we need that? There's so much division, so much of after one another's throats. We're, we're bickering about this, that, and everything constantly. And even inside the church and, and inside uh, the, the larger picture of Christianity, how this denomination and that denomination and you know even internally in the catholic church the the political divides of our society also divide uh, church sometimes and we really have to uh, not allow that to manifest itself in our hearts and in our lives you know this unity that jesus desires and he desires that above everything. I had the opportunity today to listen to a very beautiful uh, speaker uh, at St. Pius. Uh, she was a guest of uh, our ladies' prayer group on Thursday and talked about being one uh, with God and, and being childlike in this oneness. Uh, Jesus himself used to say, you know, the kingdom of heaven belongs to to such as these and uh, we are as we always have to remember children of God and we have to maintain that simplicity in our faith and not uh, convolute uh, our trust in our Lord with all of the trappings of the world that can be very 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 divisive so let us pray today for unity for peace, for harmony, and for truth. And that's the one thing that we really have to always rely on and, and live by. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And so if we stay true to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, then we live unified to him the way, the truth, and the life. So let us pray our evening prayer together today in a spirit of unity. Let's work on diminishing the divisions that might be in our families and in our homes and in our society, in our city, in our state, in our country, in our world. And we're all children of God. God calls us to love one another, all of us, everyone. 
no segregation. No, I love that one, but not that one. And they're okay, but not them. And that's not how God wants it. God wants us all, all to be one. Tall order, but let's work on it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God has given him the throne of David his father. Alleluia. O Lord, remember David and all the many hardships he endured. The oath, the oath he swore to the Lord. Oops. And Joey, don't move the... <laughs> Sorry. The oath he swore to the Lord his vow to the strong one of Jacob. I will not enter the house where I live, nor go to the bed where I rest. I will give no sleep to my eyes, to my eyelids I will give no slumber, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the strong one of Jacob. At Ephrathah we heard of the ark, we found it in the plains of Urim. Let us go to the place of his dwelling, let us go to kneel at his footstool. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest, you in the ark of your strength. Your priests shall be clothed with holiness. Your faithful shall ring out their joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God has given him the throne of David, his father. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is supreme in his power. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Alleluia. The Lord swore an oath to David. He will not go back on his word. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If they keep my covenant in truth and my laws that I have taught them, your sons also shall rule on your throne from age to age. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever. Here have I chosen to live. I will greatly bless her produce. I will fill her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation. And her faithful shall ring out their joy. There, David's flock, David's stock will flower. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. I will cover his enemies with shame. But on him my crown shall shine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you chose to suffer and be overwhelmed by death in order to open the gates of death in triumph. Stay with us to help us on our pilgrimage. Free us from all evil by the power of your resurrection. In the company of your saints and constantly remembering your love for us, may we sing of your wonders in our Father's house. Jesus Christ is supreme in his power. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Alleluia. Lord, who is like your equal in power? Who is like you, majestic and in holiness? Alleluia. We praise you, the Lord God Almighty, who is and who was. You have assumed your great power. You have begun your reign. <laughs> the nations have raged in anger, but then came your day of wrath and the moment to judge the dead, the time to reward your servants, the prophets, and the holy ones who revere you, the great and the small alike. Now have salvation and power come, the reign of our God and the authority of his anointed one, for the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who night and day accused them before God. 
they defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death, so rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, who is your equal in power, who is like you, majestic in holiness. Alleluia. Joseph just handed me this. This is what you're hearing in the background. It's a silly toy that makes all this crazy noise. Of course, he decides that this is what he wants to play with at this moment. So, sorry. A reading from the book of Revelation. These are the ones who have survived the great period of trial. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It was this that brought them before God's throne. Day and night they minister to him in the temple. He who sits on the throne will give them shelter. Never again shall they know hunger or thirst, nor shall the sun set <coughs> or its heat beat down on them nor sh shall the sun or its heat beat down on them. For the Lamb on the throne will shepherd them. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. The splendor of the just will shine before God. Alleluia, alleluia. The splendor of the just will shine before God. Alleluia. Hallelujah. The upright heart will the upright of heart will rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The splendor of the just will shine before God. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice all you sons, you saints before the Lamb, for the kingdom has been prepared for you from the beginning of the world. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice, all you saints, before the Lamb, for the kingdom has been prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Alleluia. This is the hour when the King of Martyrs offered his life in the upper room and laid it down on the cross. Let us thank him and say, We praise you, O Lord. <coughs> we praise you, O Lord, our Savior, inspiration and example for every martyr, for loving us to the end. We praise you, O Lord, for calling all repentant sinners to the rewards of life. We praise you, O Lord, for entrusting to your church the blood of the new and everlasting covenant poured out for the remission of sin. We praise you, O Lord, for our perseverance in your grace today. We praise you, O Lord, for incorporating our dead brothers and sisters into your own death today. We praise you, O Lord. Gathering our prayer and praises into one, let us offer the prayer that Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, may we benefit from the example of your martyrs, Marcellinus and Peter, and be supported by their prayers. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Tomorrow we celebrate First Friday of June. So if you're a daily Mass attender, remember that Mass is 1130, not 830. So we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you all.